Well, some more back there when I was about a junior in high school. I'd met Donna probably that summer before. I was very interested in her, and I dated that little blonde that scared me to death uh, when she crawled on my lap with her dad and mom and brother in the car on the way to the state fair. And used to take Betty Brewer home after night, uh, Sunday night church occasionally. We'd kind of snuggle up, liked her a lot, with no sparks for really flying. Been over there to Conway Springs before, when I was a freshman and a sophomore, just minding my own business and got spotted by the local boys and, and challenged and got into a couple of fights. I think probably I've mentioned one of them before. The, the one fight was very brief and very short, and the other kid had enough, and I don't even remember who he was or what it was all about, but it, it didn't amount to anything. Just boom, bang, boom, and over. The other one, I think maybe it was a Pelman boy. I can't really remember. I don't think it's Pelman. But whoever it was, he got me toes out, and now we're going to go around the corner off of Main Street in front of a filling station, and we're really getting at it. A lot of kids, a lot of adults. And all of a sudden, I'm aware I hear my dad's voice and some other voices joining right in with, hey, 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 you guys stay out of it. That's between these two boys. Obviously, the local boys were going to trip me or something, help help the Conway Springs boy have a little advantage. So that fight went on quite a while, and I think it ended up pretty much the both of us bushed and nobody winner, nobody loser, and everybody perfectly willing when somebody said, hey, boys, isn't that enough? And we agreed it was enough. And never had any more trouble, as a as I point out, don't even remember the name. But now here I am, interested in Donna and dating her pretty regular. And I go over, and she says, "What's this I hear that you're back overseeing that girl over towards Harper, towards Spivey? What do you mean?" Well, she said so and so, and named the boy. Says that he knows you were over there recently. That's just not true. So, I go looking for that guy. I did know his name real well. Can't think of it right now. But I find him and follow him into the Drake drugstore. Well, you know, drugstores in those days had counters with a little jewelry in it. They had the soda fountain and they had the medicine and so on. And my gosh... We got over there in front of the, we were both at the counter where you get served soda and so on. And I'm saying to him, I don't know what your information is, but you didn't see. Ah, oh, yes, I did. No, you didn't. It's not true. I was dumb enough. I hit him with my left hand, and I'm right-handed as can be. And we ended up with a little jousting around and pushing and shoving and guess we were moving towards the jewelry counter because I'll tell you right that now all of a sudden Mr. Drake was on us for the search. Get out of here. If you're going to fight, get somewhere else. Don't be causing damage in my store. Well, I think the real thing was that the other young gentleman was interested in Donna and was trying to get me discredited, but that didn't work. We were pretty serious about each other. And all of a sudden, it's time to graduate from high school, and I'd always expected to be drafted, and here in 1945, and I graduated from high school May of 46. The war's really over. But Dad had always said, you boys are on your own. This farm won't support you as, as young adults. When you get out of high school, you're on your own. And I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And I knew that the GI Bill was still in effect and I knew it was still considered World War II. Not that that made any difference to me at the time. But I went ahead and I got out of high school and signed up. And on the last day that I was home, 
We had finished cutting the wheat at the rig's household because Dad said, I don't leave till after harvest. Okay, okay. So I set it up to leave right on my birthday. I think it was a day or two before. I come up on a Sunday. And uh, since we'd finished cutting our wheat, he contracted to cut some uh, uh, Floyd, Mr. Floyd, Stanley Floyd's wheat. So I helped with that operation Sunday morning, shoveled that grain out of the truck into the Floyd's uh, granary. Might have quit a little early. Went home, Donna was over, had Sunday dinner, cleaned up, caught the doodle bug, little tiny train. Went from Milton, Kansas to Salina, Kansas, Air Force Base there at that time. Raised my right arm the next day and became a soldier in the United States Army, sworn to take all legal orders and to defend this nation come hell or high water. 